nationally famous TV star, is joined by Uncle Sam and Miss America and over 52,000 excited fans to sing God Bless America at America's first official birthday party, the 1975 Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Brought to you by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association and the First National Bank of Memphis. The traditional Liberty Bell in lights on the First National Bank building seems to stand silent sentry over Memphis, proclaiming liberty for all in sight on this eve of the bicentennial year. Memphis, queen of the Mississippi, stands ready to be immersed in the fever that is college football in anticipation of one of the great postseason games, the Liberty Bowl. This year's game takes on an extra dimension of importance because this spot and this game have been selected as the first official bicentennial sporting event, the bicentennial kickoff, the first giant American birthday party. At the First National Bank building, it's all smiles as Bud Dudley, founder of the Liberty Bowl, and Ron Terry, chairman of the board, First Tennessee National Corporation, and a big fan and supporter, look over the program. This year's exceptional cover design is an original painting, Symbols of Liberty, created by the renowned Memphis artist William Nolan Van Powell. weekend of festivities kick off with a riverboat party at the beer stew thanks to the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company. Magnetic Memphis music, the sore dancing feet, the great food and plenty of the sponsors product and the motif of the paddle wheel steamer launches us into Liberty Bowl 1975. And speaking of launching, the morning after, a new event is launched into the Liberty Bowl pregame schedule. Judging by its success, it looks like a real winner. Seemingly, hundreds of small sailing boats joined in the first annual Frostbite Regatta, trying to avoid exactly that, Frostbite and each other. Fridays in Memphis is the place to be on Saturday. The wives of players, coaches, and officials had cocktails at this popular Overton Square spot before going across the street to the Bombay Bicycle Club for lunch. The Liberty Bell, Betsy Ross, and this floral replica of Old Glory create the mood and atmosphere for a slightly more formal occasion, the traditional black tie dinner and dance. Good food and entertainment in the candlelight setting in the ballroom of the Hyatt Regency House seems like a natural way to spend Saturday night before the Monday night kickoff. Like a jewel sparkling in the Tennessee sunshine, the newly completed Hyatt Regency Hotel, a symbol of modern Memphis, is an exciting backdrop for this year's Liberty Bowl festivities. This unique 25-foot high poinsettia tree in the lobby reflects Christmas magic in Memphis. Playing host to USC, the new hotel's foundation was sorely tested, but the gleaming glass tower withstood the impact of well over 10,000 pounds of football muscle. Southern Cal takes time out from a flurry of weekend activities for a hearty meal at Friday's, a colorful and favorite eating spot in Memphis. But the serious business of football is never forgotten as the Aggies go through a loosening up drill. Centennial kickoff is only 24 hours away. The 
press and school officials try to break the mounting tension at a press reception. Good food, good music, and theories and opinions about the game are in plentiful supply, and everything in Memphis is wearing bicentennial colors this week. The Liberty Memorial Stadium, here in Replica, awaits its grandest hour. Game day dawns crisp and clear over Memphis. The cold weekend winds have subsided. The weather conditions at game time should be excellent. At the game day luncheon at the Holiday Inn Rivermont, an audience of over 2,000 enjoys a distinguished at table, including the two men of the hour, Aggie coach Emory Ballard and Southern Cal's John McKay. MC, Liberty Bowl past president Don Drinkard, welcomes the large crowd and introduces the head table. Miss America, Tawny Elaine Godin, enjoys a joke with yours truly. And a special guest is astronaut Major General Thomas P. Stafford. Bud Wilkinson, Keith Jackson, and Bill Fleming of ABC TV are here to make tonight's action come alive for 40 million fans around the country. Chuck Muncie, University of California's all-time rushing leader, received Chevrolet's Offensive Player of the Year award. Defensive honors go to tackle Steve Niehaus of Notre Dame. He overcame three knee operations to win this award. He was accompanied by his legendary athletic director, Edward Moose Kraus, who accepted the scholarship award. Speaking of legends, Bear Bryant of Alabama presents the Liberty Bowl's Distinguished Service Award to John McKay. It was a real honor and privilege for me to present this award, wherever it is, to my warm friend, John McKay. Tonight's game will mark the end of a brilliant college coaching career for John McKay. years and a record of 126 wins, 40 losses, and eight ties, McKay leaves USC as head coach and athletic director. McKay is one of only three coaches ever to have won four national championships. The man who presented today's award, Bear Bryant, is one. The other is Frank Leahy. Both are Liberty Bowl Distinguished Service Award winners. In his years at USC, McKay coached such greats as Anthony Davis. Heisman Trophy winner, Mike Garrett and O.J. Simpson. College football in USC will certainly miss this bright and innovative man in its ranks. The Liberty Bowl is proud to have John McKay coach his final collegiate game here in Memphis. The party mood continues right up to game time. Here at the buffet dinner, the symbols of the Bicentennial and the Liberty Bowl are everywhere. With the kickoff just an hour and a hundred yards away, the warm-up has been as exciting as the game. Game time. And a record crowd of more than 52,000 fans turn out to enjoy a classic struggle of what will certainly be one of the most historic of all Liberty Bowls. John McKay, Southern Cal Trojans, Southwest Conference Tri-Champion, Texas A&M. It is an intersectional clash that will be witnessed by millions around the country in the newly named Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. The thrilling voice of Marguerite Piazza signals the beginning of America's first official bicentennial event, the 1975 Liberty Bowl.
Margaret Piazza, a native of Memphis, Tennessee, and a fantastic voice in America, just singing our national anthem. And now, 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, your network for news and sports. This is WGN Radio Chicago, where this Sunday you'll hear the National Football League semifinal playoff game starting at 11.45. Football broadcaster, Mr. Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Al Wester. Hello again, everybody. We've had a spectacular pregame performance here. This event, of course, is the only sports event that is officially designated as a bicentennial event. Here comes the kicker forward. Glenn Walker puts it up over the Roaches' side of the field. The little man at the five-yard line, Rogers to the 10 to the 15, across the 20 cuts left, and he's hit down the 23-yard line. Oh, the Texas Aggies have returned to the 23 Morris downfield to make the tackle, along with Van Dyke. It is first and 10 now, off at the 23-yard line. Mike Jay is the quarterback. It was thought that he would not be able to play. Mike Jay, 5'11", 181-pounder. Now the first play is a dive moving up to the... Bubba Bean carrying and moved it up out of the wishbone to the 29-yard line. Bubba Bean, who is the leading ground gainer, of course, has picked up 968 yards this year, has averaged 6.6 yards per carry. He picked up six that time at second and four. Once again, is handed off to Bubba Bean. Bubba Bean, who will carry the ball a great deal tonight, picked up only one yard up to the 30-yard line, and Gary Jeter, the junior tackle from Cleveland, Ohio, a 240-pounder, was in to make the stop. Eye formation. They run the eye. Bubba Bean off the tail of the tandem, looking for three. I don't think he got it. Kevin Bruce, the senior from La Cunata, California, came in to make the tackle. He's co-captain of the Trojan, six feet tall, 215 pounds. He didn't make it, and the putting in is coming up. Dropping back now, Thurman, along with Reese. Thurman and Reese are deep. And the putter is Mark Stanley. Stanley puts it up. And it's taken by Thurman. He's running along the 39 to 40, gets to the 45-yard line. Fumble! Campbell is on at the 43. The scramble on at the 43, and Thurman fumble. No signal yet. It's recovered by Southern California, because down on the bottom there, I can see one of McKay's numbers. Gary Jeter coming up with the football, Lindsay. The quarterback is Smith seven. Ricky Bell, of course. Number 42 is their principal ball carrier. Wide receivers left and right, they run out of the Southern Cal I formation. Dropping back is Evans to throw. A screen right, taken out there on the right flat. It's mostly to Tupu, the fullback. And to Tupu from Honolulu gets across the 45 of the Aggies and on down to the 44. Pat Thomas, the All-American left cornerback, came in to make the tackle. It is first and 10 as John McKay opened up with a screen to his fullback in the right flat. And mostly to Tupu, a sophomore from Honolulu, took it to the 44. They're in the eye, Randy Sermon, number 18, part of the left side, and Dennis Thurman, part of the right side. Thurman in motion, back across left outside now. Give it to Ricky Bell, and Ricky Bell gets just about a yard, and that's all. That Southern Cal done better as far as wins and losses are concerned. He would have done better in the Heisman voting. Junior Lee's in the slot left. The two push the fullback, Ricky Bell behind him. Dropping back is Vince Evans. He's taking a look, he's going to throw, and it's incomplete. It is incomplete. It was intended for Randy Summers. The Southern Cal I formation. Evans starts a man in motion. Simmons back toward the inside. Evans starts back to throw. Now, look. He had a man open. Didn't see it. Didn't see it. He goes to the 40, running it to the 35 and on down to the 32-yard line. Jackie Williams made the stop. Williams along with Marshall. Tank Marshall and Williams as he took it to the 32-yard line. Now, Evans will run the football. He is capable of running the football and running it well. He picked up nine yards in the first down. The Trojans of Southern Cal playing for the final time under head coach John McKay, who spent 16 seasons there. Here's a quick pitch to Bell going outside to Tupu. Throws a block. He cuts back inside to the 29-yard line. Ricky Bell picked up three yards. It's going to be second and seven. Robert Jackson from his linebacker spot. Little linebacker, a junior from Houston, came in to make the tackle. Now, back in motion, Sermon toward the inside. Here's Evans hanging out to the right. He's going to throw on the run. He is spinning and finally throws it up the sideline and it is incomplete and almost intercepted by Jackie Williams. Jackie Williams dives as Evans really was unloading, holding on to him at the time, getting all across the pressure. Ed Simonetti, the All-American linebacker, and Robert Jackson. Junior Lee is in there now and Thurman goes out for Southern Cal. They're in a slot left, third and seven at the 29. Motion to the outside, that's Junior Lee. Ricky Bell gets it. Back to go right up the middle. Just the way they 
just to use O.J. Simpson. Edgar Fields came in to make the stop. Again, about a yard, possibly two on the play. And so now, for Southern Cal, the ball is at the 27-yard line. So if they're back there in the huddle right now, we're going to get a field goal attempt here. And it's going to be Glenn Walker in field goals. He was 6 for 18 this year. And holding will be Sanford. This will be a 35-yard attempt. A 35-yard attempt from squarely in front of the upright. Snap to Sanford, put down. Walker boots it up. It's carrying long enough. And it's good. A 45-yard field goal is good. And so, with the score, Southern Cal 3, Texas A&M nothing. There's a timeout on the field. Now this for Buick. Glenn Walker's longest field goal this year was a 47-yarder. He just booted a 45-yarder here in the Liberty Bowl. He'll kick off now in the same two minutes we need at the start of the ball game for Texas A&M. Have dropped back once again. Rochers and Baker are deep. It is over to Baker's side. It's going to be fielded up short at the 19-yard line, however. And return now by Armstrong, and he gets just across the 30. Armstrong filled at the 31-yard line. Mike Jay, the quarterback. Handing this one off, and it's carried up to the 35-yard line. Bruce coming in to make the tackle. George Woodard, the freshman fullback here, plays. The option play now, and here is the late flip. Taken wide. It is Bubba Bean carrying, turning the corner, and going out of bounds as he got up across the 45-yard line. Bubba Bean managed to get around the corner, and Clint Strozier, along with Dale Logie, came in to make the tackle. The Aggies have a 5-3 and three bowl record. They've played in the Dixie Classic of the Sugar Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the Presidential Cup, and the Gator Bowl. Ball is spotted up there at the 45-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for the Texas Aggies at their own 45. The option play again, a penalty marker is thrown. Quarterback keeps Mike J. Gains 5 to the 50, but what about the penalty marker on the far side of the field? A lineman's flag was thrown. Five-yard penalty against the Aggies for an illegal shift. That means they have two men in motion. Kevin Bruce, the co-captain, exercised the option. He's the senior block in Yachty, California. All right, again, the quarterback. He's going to throw on the run, and he's putting up intended for his favorite pass receiver, Richard Osborne. Mike Jay just wanted to lob that one up to Osborne. Osborne has had 13 receptions for two touchdowns this year. He is number two among the A&M receivers as far as career receptions, 86. For Richard Osborne from San Antonio. They're in an eye formation. Little Carl Roaches, far to the left side. They fake to the tail back, and it's Jay throwing to Roaches. He's across to the 40-yard line of Southern Cal. To the 40-yard line of Southern Cal, first and 10. Kevin Bruce made the stop at quarterback Mike Jay, the senior from Carnton, Wyoming. It's Carl Roaches, the senior from Houston, a 20-yard pickup. He's only 5 foot 8, and he weighs about 165, and they say that's when he's wet in the shower with his clothes on. Ah, but does he ever move? They're up there now in the wishbone. Once again, Jay has the ball, gives it to his fullback, the freshman fullback, George Woodard. Second down play coming here. Now here's a quick pitch to Bubba Bean. He's turning the right corner, penalty marker. Bubba Bean gets to the 32, but there is a penalty. It's going to be against the Aggies, Lindsay. A 15-yard penalty against the Aggies for holding. Texas with the ball, Texas A&M with the ball at the 50-yard line. They come out in the eye formation this time. Mike Jay dropping back. Gives a little as he puts it up long and too long. It is then complete and almost intercepted. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Intended for Jim Hartman. And Doug Hogan almost had it. It's going to be third and 20. Finding out now is Mike Jay. He whips it on the run. Taken by Rutgers at the 30-yard line. Rutgers took it and went out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Ron Bush was right there. Bush from San Bernardo. Oh, that little fella can really run, Lindsay. A 20-yard gain on that, and believe me, when Roaches went down, I didn't think he had a chance of breaking the zone, but the zone was wide there. Hogan was deep, Bush was in front of him, and uh, he's right in the middle there. He's a little fella, but getting that football to him, Mike Jay just fired it in there to him. It, it is inches short of the first down. It's spotted just short of the 30. Yankees, they're up there in their wishbone, and they give it to Winters, a big pullback. What a job the offensive line did. What a job that offensive line did. Mark Jenner at the center. Frank Myers, the guard on the right side. They opened it up. Texas Aggies are driving. Carl Roaches goes to the right side of the wishbone. Give it to the right half back this time. Jim Hartman. He is stacked up as he got to the 17-yard line. He got about a yard. 
It was Rod Martin who came in to make the tackle. It's going to be second down now, nine yards to go. Mike Floyd, Spearman, Texas goes wide to the right side. They're in the wishbone. Now here is the pitch on the Oscars. Take it back. Bubba Bean to the 10, to the 8-yard line. Bubba Bean took it to the 8-yard line. What a running back. Doug Hogan came up to make this stop. They're taking a long look at the sticks now to see where it is with regard to the first down marker. I think it's going to be just a shade short as it's spotted just outside the 8-yard line. It'll be third down, less than a yard to go, and here comes Carl Rocher sprinting into the huddle. Bean has carried six times for 29 yards. They're up there now in the wishbone. It's Winter, the fullback to the five-yard line. First and goal. First down and goal to go for the Texas Aggies. They have the ball at the five. Gary Jeter, a big 240-pound tackle from Cleveland, Ohio, along with Eric Williams, made the stop. He actually played in only six games during the regular year. Gained 604 yards, the most ever any freshman's done at Texas A&M. Winter's carried four times for 24 yards here tonight. He gets it again. Piled in there for about two yards. Penalty marker, if they give it to Bubba Bean, he dies in for a yard, but there could have been motion. I think somebody beat the snap. Illegal shift, that was two men in motion, and so the ball is moved back there now to the eight-yard line. And then came on to college at Texas A&M. He's 23 years old. They're up there in the wishbone. And he's running the option play. Jay has got it. He's at the five. He's at the four. Bubble! Bubble! Southern Calvary covered at the six. Southern Calvary covered at the six. Mike Jay, the quarterback, was shaking loose. And the Trojans get the football. David Lewis is on it. David Lewis, San Diego, California. First and ten for Southern Cal at the six. There is no score. And the Trojans, what a job they did then. Battling it all the way and then tackling football in the end there and getting the football. Well, it goes over to Southern California down uh, in the end zone. They go into into a huddle inside the end zone. And that ball, Lindsay, I believe is on the six-yard line. Get your whole house magic is clean. Ben Savage, the quarterback up there for Southern Cal now. They're in an eye formation. Motion back to the inside. That's Lee. Now he's outside left. Ricky Bell, pass to Jitterberg up the middle, gets one yard against the Texas A&M defense. Edgar Fields from Austin, Texas, came in to make the tackle. It's second down and nine at the seven-yard line. Vince Evans, waiting now for motion outside by Thurman. He's hanging to the left now, wants to throw, puts it up on the run. Complete! Taken out there by Randy Simran. Simran took it across the 15. Lester Hayes and Bill Thompson converged on him. It's going to be brought into the inbounds marker now on the far side. It's about just about the 15-yard line. Lester Hayes, one of the great safeties in the Southwestern Conference. They tell me he runs 109-4. He was a defensive end, surprisingly enough, in high school. A&M tried him out at running back, but he said he was scared to death he'd get killed because the offensive line at that time was not strong enough to keep him out from bruising him. Second team All-American, All-SWC. Third down and one yard to go. Third and one for the Trojans. They have the ball at their own 15. And it goes to a high count. Gives it to Ricky Bell. He goes piling in and is thrown back. He didn't get it. He did not get it. He got about a foot and that was all. So it's going to be fourth down coming up now. Jackie Williams, the All-Southwestern Conference. Yeah. 350 made the tackle along with Jackson. And here comes the punting unit in for Southern Cal. The punting unit now led by Glenn Walker, who averaged 39.7 yards per kick. And dropping back to receive the punt for A&M is Carl Roaches. Carl Roach is way back on his own 45-yard line. Walker hands out stretch, waits, gets the snap now, puts it up, and the fair catch signal goes up, and the fair catch is made at the 46-yard line of Southern Cal. So it is first and 10 for the Aggies, and they have the ball in Southern Cal territory. Now the quarterback, Jay, is running the option. He pitches late, but it's taken there outside by Jim Hartman. Hartman is ridden out by the Southern Cal defense for a loss on the near side of the field. Now a whistle that stops play. The ball was snapped. It was taken by Mike Jay. He started to hang a lot. But a whistle that stops play. And let's see, uh, while they're stepping this off, I see they're going to take time to do it. With that timeout down there, the score 3-0 in favor of the Trojans. Let's take 30 seconds for our station. Now this word. Five-yard penalty for delay of game against the Aggies. Now Jay takes the ball. He rolls out left. He's trying to get outside. Can't. He's going out of bounds about the 43-yard line. Eric Williams rides him out, so that'll bring it up fourth and terribly long. And the punting unit is coming in now for Texas A&M. The punter is Mark Stanley. He has averaged 38.4, his longest punt, 65 yards. He is in deep punt formation. 
Hands are stretched now and waiting for the snap. He puts it up. And the ball is being taken at the 16-yard line. No return, and it's going to start at the 16-yard line. Wide receiver to the left side. They're in the Southern Cal I formation. Moshi Tatupu is the fullback. Ricky Bell's the tailback. Dropping back is Evans. He wants to throw. Screen left to Tupu. The Tupu side flips the tackle. Gets to the 15 Overhaul from behind by Edgar Field. From Austin, Texas. And he got to the 20-yard line. Well, Texas A&M then was blitzing the middle linebacker, Robert Jackson. He flashed right by the screen. Saw the man catch the football. But because he was blitzing it, it should have been an ideal call. However, with great speed, this fellow Edgar Field covered the distance, caught him behind, rustled him down. It could have been a big play for Southern California, except for Field. Randy Simmons comes out of the huddle, goes wide to the left side, leading pass receiver for the Trojans of Southern Cal. They're in an eye formation now. Good Evans, the quarterback, leaning in to take the snap. Now there's motion to the outside right. That's Thurman. Here's the pitch to Ricky Bell. Cuts back off, tackle right, 20-25, and goes to the 30-yard line and down to the 31-yard line. Ricky Bell turned it on first and ten. Pat Thomas, the All-American cornerback, and Jackie Williams, the All-Conference free safety, made the stop. Ricky Bell gained 1,875 yards this year to break the record of O.J. Simpson. There is the gun. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Texas A&M 3, the University of Southern California, nothing. Now this for Lazy Boy and John Hancock. First and ten at their own 31-yard line. They're up in an eye formation with a slot right. Trojan Van Vink, fight on for all SC. Evans leaning in now, ready to take the snap. Motion to the outside. That's Lee, and here's the handoff to the up man. Mosey to Tupu, and no gain. He is swarmed for the Texas Aggie defense at the 31, led by Edgar Field. Second and ten at the 31-yard line. Ed Simonetti, the All-American linebacker for Texas A&M, and co-captain of the Aggies for this game. Came in to make the tackle. Simonetti, a senior. Las Vegas, Nevada. What a year he had. Thurman has come in now to replace Junior Lee. They alternate a great deal, bringing plays in. That was Tatupu's first carry. He's used primarily as a blocking back in the offensive Southern Cal. Strangely enough, Sam Cunningham, who turned out to be a great pro running back, was also used as a blocking back, as a fullback during his college days at SC. Now here's a quick pitch taken by Ricky Bell. Off tackle right. Sweeps outside, now to the 35 and on up to the 39-yard line. Ricky Bell. Tank Marshall came in to make the tackle, along with Robert Jackson, the middle linebacker. Motion to the outside. Again, that's Lee. A whistle. That'll be delayed. That'll cost them five. The field judge is the man who calls that play. The field judge keeps the time. Ricky Bell is on the tail of the tandem now in the eye formation as they come up Evans. Waiting for motion to the outside. That's Thurman. He's on the outside left. Now fakes the handoff is Evans. He pumps. He wants to find Thurman. Now he's going to go along with Atfield, and it is taken down there by Randy Simran. Simran gets right to the one-yard line. Simran to the one-yard line on a long pass. Pat Thomas brought him down to save the touchdown. First and goal to go for Southern Cal, a 65-yard pass play. And over on the Texas Aggie bench, I know they're questioning. They're looking down there saying, where was Lester Hayes? The strong safety apparently had played wide, looking for the man to run with the football. When there was really no pass put in the air, the hesitation on the runner, the sweep to the left, the pause, and he had plenty of time, Lindsey. And it's the quarterback, waiting for the stop now. Gets it to Tupu, and touchdown, Southern Cal. The Trojans are on the scoreboard. They moved 84 yards in six plays. The Southern Cal has gone ahead 6-3 to three with a conversion attempt coming. And the Trojan band again strikes up. One of the most famous of all the fight songs of the colleges in America. Fight on for all SC. Now we have a conversion attempt coming. Glenn Walker, who converted 23 of 26 during the regular season. Thurman will hold for it. It is Thurman holding. Waiting for the snap now. Glenn Walker is waiting. Thurman looks back at him. Hand out stretch. Waits for the snap. He's got it. He puts it down. Walker boots it up. And it's good. And so with the score. Southern Cal 7, Texas A&M 3. There's a timeout on the field. And now this for Kodak. Do you think this Southern Cal football team is just pumped up to do one thing, give John McKay a win at the end? I really think they are. And it is taken at the 24-yard line, returned to the 25, and on up to the 28-yard line by Hart, 
Hart in the fullback by Slave returned it. An illegal block, and so it's going to be a penalty again. Texas A&M. First and ten now. There goes the little man in motion. Roach is left outside there in a the wishbone. Mike Jay gets the football. Break to his fullback. He's runs back now. Throws on the run. And it's intercepted by Southern California. Intercepted by Seth Crozier. Seth Crozier from Oxnard, California. It's going to be at the 19-yard line. First and ten. As Jay was trying to get it out to Richard Osborne. But it was intercepted. He inherited All-American Charlie Phillips' number, 49, made the interception. Southern Cal has it again. The second A&M turnover. They're up there in the nine formation. There goes Lee in motion to the outside. Evans has the ball. Quick pitch to Ricky Bell. The two foot throws a block. Bell cuts inside and goes to the 16-yard line. Ricky Bell on the tail of the tandem in the I formation. Motion to two foot directly ahead of him. Second and seven. Thurman in motion to the outside right. Ricky Bell cuts back to the inside. He was closed off at the 16-yard line. Jimmy Dean got seven, and so did Ed Simonetti. So it's going to be third and seven. Keep in mind that Ricky Bell bettered O.J. Simpson's pack eight record when he gained 1,875 yards. Keep in mind that Ricky Bell gained 518 yards more than the Heisman Trophy winner, Archie Griffin of Ohio State. About a quarter of a mile more than Archie Griffin. Third down and seven yards to go. The ball is at the 16-yard line. They're in an eye formation, a slot left. Trojans are leading 10-0. They're deep in Texas A&M territory. Lee in motion to the outside right. Evans starts back, fakes the handoff. Being chased out of the pocket left now. And he's going to be sacked. He fumbles the football. At the 22-yard line, he was dropped. He was down before he skidded away. Edgar Fields chasing him around. Fields a big 250-pound tackle from Austin, Texas. All right, we'll have a field goal attempt here now. It'll be a 40-yard attempt. Walker will attempt it. Stanford puts it down, Walker puts it up, 40-yard attempt, and it's good. A 40-yarder by Glenn Walker is good. There's a timeout with a score, Southern Cal 13, Texas A&M, nothing. It's a Sony. And it's 13 to nothing, Southern California here in the 17th. Liberty Bowl game from Memphis. Lindsay, here's the kickoff. Ben Walker from Gardena, California, passes it down the middle now, and it is going to be fielded at the 17-yard line. Return to the 20 to 25, and out up to the 29, fumbled, and Southern Cal recovered. Harden again took it. Harden brought it upfield. He fumbled, and Southern Cal has recovered. Again, it is deep in Texas Aggie territory. Van Dyke was on the football. It'll be first and 10 for the Trojans at the 26-yard line. Outside the 26-yard line of the Texas Bank. Van Dyke grabbed that football and just popped right out of the runner's hand. And Van Dyke had it there to pile up. Doubled over on top of it. I don't think a truck could have wrestled it away from him. Motion to the outside. That's Lee. There's a wide receiver right as well. Evans angles out right now and hands it off on a delay to Richie Bell. Inside the 20. Cutting right to the 15. On down to the 14. Bill Thompson. It was a running crawl. A running draw play, take it back to Ricky Bell, who delayed a couple of counts and then took it angled off right and drove it inside. 12 yards pick up, and the ball is at the 14-yard line. Lindsay, that right guard, Donnie Hickman, you can't say enough about this fella. Great there. He swung out, led the way with Mosi Tatupu, the back helping him, and the two of them just cleaned the road there to let Ricky Bell break through. Bell has carried 10 times for 40 yards here tonight. Evans turns around to say something to Mosi Tatupu. Now a quick count is given to Ricky Bell. And he cuts off tackle right, gets one yard to the 13, Robert Jackson. Coming in there that time, they went on uh, on set. Here's Evans now dropping straight back. Puts it up, and it's deflected, intercepted. Taking it to 7, return to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. And it's Lester Hayes. Lester Hayes returning. Finally dropped. Randy Simran on it there as the ball is bounding around. Campbell was on, A&M retains it at the 32-yard line. Oh, boy. All sorts of hijacks here at the 17th Annual Liberty Bowl. The interception by Lester Hayes. It is spotted now, and it matches the 33-yard line. The Aggies have the football on the interception. A turnover by Southern Cal. Mark it up to Edgar Fields with a great pass rush on Vince Edwards. He lowered the boom on him as he threw. Here's the fullback carrying on its Woodard. It is George Woodard, the freshman. He got just across the 35-yard line. It'll be second down and eight at the 35. We have eight minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the first half. Here's a late pitch now. 
Bubba Bean was upset as he uh, tried to turn a corner and was still back to 33 where it's going to be third and 10. Gary Jeter from Cleveland, Ohio went on the tackle. Roach is part of the left side. The Aggies are in an eye formation. Angling back now is Jay. He wants to throw. Thrown off balance, regains his balance and spreads his way back up to the 37-yard line. Picked up about four yards, actually. It's going to be fourth now. Twelve yards to go in the punting, and it'll come on Rod Martin from Los Angeles. Came in to make the tackle. We pause for station identification. This is Mutual, your network for news and sports. This is WGN Radio Chicago, where this Sunday you'll hear the National Football League semifinal playoff game starting at 11.45. Now punt formation, and it's Mark Stanley. Dropping back to receive the punt is Reese. And it is down to the 26-yard line. And that is where they will start first and 10, a 36-yard punt. Evans takes the snap now. He is fading back and handing it off to Ricky Bell. But Ricky Bell is hit immediately by Edgar Fields back at the 22. It is a loss of four yards on the play. So it's going to be second down and 14 yards to go now for the Trojans. That's Thurman in motion right outside now. And here is the fullback. Mosey to Tupo with a quick handoff. Stop just short of the 25-yard line. It's going to be third on about 11 to go. Edgar Fields and Jimmy Dean, the defensive tackle. Dean is from Lake Jackson, Texas, a junior. 261 pounds. He's 6 feet 5 inches tall. We have 5 minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the first half of this 17th annual Liberty Bowl game. Paul Bear Bryant. The famous coach of the University of Alabama is here. He presented an award today to John McKay, who is coaching the Trojans of Southern Cal for the final time here tonight. Craig Ferdig also, his offensive coach, here for the last time. He becomes head coach at Oregon State next year. Ferdig does. Now Evans throws a screen left to Ricky Bell. Had a little trouble gathering it in, so the screen, he left, and he cut back to the inside. He's gone across the 50, the 40, 35, 30. Ricky Bell's got to go all the way, holding the ball aloft. He goes into the end zone. 76 yards and a touchdown. It was a screen left. He did part it from the screen, got back to the inside. The screen was going straight ahead. He bobbled the ball a moment when he caught it. Then by the time he got possession, he left the screen, went back to the inside, cut down, feeling with 76 yards. There were at least four Aggies who had a shot at him there, but Bell, when he cut back into the middle, I think absolutely fouled everybody up. No one thought for a moment. He was going back against the flow of the action. Going to the left, all the flow was that way. He came back, he found the running room, and did those legs come high when he ran, Lindsay? Ran it back against the green, 76 yards. Evans is now 5 for 7, forward passing, 169 yards and one touchdown. Walker's going to attempt a conversion. It is booted up, and it's good. And so there's a timeout with a score. The Trojans 20 and the Aggies nothing. Now this word. Barbra Streisand's new album is available in the record department at all Chicagoland adventure stores. Walker again bounces the ball down the middle next to the 15-yard line. It's taken by Rucci. He comes back up with the 20-25, and at the 28, he is piled up. So now the Aggies will take over first and 10. They'll have the ball at their own 28-yard line. It was Van Dyke downfield to make the tackle. Southern California now 20 to nothing out in front of Texas A&M. And quarterback is taking it now and it's handed off to Bubba Bean. Mike J to Bubba Bean across the 31-yard line. Three yards on the play. It'll be second down and seven. Now again the ball is taken. Now handed off to Bubba Bean. He finds running the match to the 40, 45, 50 across into Trojan territory at the 48-yard line. First and 10. Bubba Bean moving the football. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. It was Danny Reese who came up to make the stop. Danny actually bumped him down, Lindsay, because they, they ran chest to chest into one another. A 20-yard gain, and they hit so hard, collided. Reese went down, and so did Bubba Bean, but he had 20 yards. First and 10 now for a &M. Give it to the fullback, that's Woodard. He moves into the 47-yard line for a gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Angling out now is quarterback Mike Jay. Whips the pass that is completed to the 40. Moving on down is Jim Hartman and out of bounds at the 38-yard line. It'll be taken to the inbounds marker and spotted first and 10. 
First and ten for the Texas Aggies, trying to get something on the scoreboard before the halftime intermission. Jim Hartman from Blue League, Louisiana, is the wing back left in the nine formation. Give it off to Bubba Bean. Goes up the middle and moves it to the 32-yard line. He picked up six on the play, at least second down and four. Mike Floyd, part of the left side. Second and four. Again to the fullback this time. George Witters, the freshman. Moved it into the 29-yard line. Jerry Jeter made the tackle. Third down and a yard to go. Well, they try this one up the middle, and it is at the 26-yard line. Woodard may have picked up the first down. Bruce made the tackle. Freshman fullback Woodard, and he got it. It is signaled by the referee. Wind them up and move the sticks. First and ten. The big problem now, Lindsay, is the clock. It shows 2.38. It's running. That's all that A&M has. And they're 26 yards away from trying to get that first touchdown on the boards. Dropping back now is Mike Jay. He wants to throw, but he's going to be sacked back at the 32-yard line. Mike Jay, dropped by Gary Jeter. What a fantastic tackle by Gary Jeter, the big inside tackle there. Jeter was blocked, went down, and as the runner came by him, laying on the ground, he reached up, locked onto him, and the big man held him. Gary, Gary Jeter, Jr., is 6'4", 240 pounds. He is some kind of a defensive tackle. Second and 16 now. The ball's outside the 22-yard line. Here it is to Bubba Bean, and he gets simply to the 30, and he's dropped after two, and it's going to be third down and 14. Rod Martin made the tackle. One minute, 46 seconds left to play in the first half here. Dropping back to throw is Mike Jay. And it is taken, intercepted, and it is Stozier returning it. Across the 25, his second interception of the night. He's out of bounds at the 32. Cliff Stozier from Oxnard, California. The junior strong safety intercepted. That's number five for Strozier this year. He's picked up five this year. Great interception there. Jay saw his man but threw over him instead of throwing under. That is the fourth A&M turnover, and Southern California has it at their 33 with a minute and 14 seconds remaining in the first half, Lindsay. 114. Just a reminder again that the Lazy Boy Chair Company is recognizing the outstanding offensive and defensive players in tonight's game. First and 10 out to 32 for Southern Cal on Strozier's interception. There's motion to the outside, that's Lee. That's if Evans is waiting for the ball. Angles out, fakes the handoff. He's going to carry it himself. 35 to the 40, to the 45. And out of bounds up near the midfield market, Jackie Williams overhauling him from behind. He's a senior from Plano, Texas. It'll be at the 50-yard line. First and 10 for the Trojans. Again, first and 10 now for the Trojans at the 50-yard line. We are late in the second quarter. Motion back toward the inside now. Evans is dropping back. And he whips it, and it is incomplete. He was trying to get that one to Randall. Second and ten at the 50-yard line. Now, a draw play. Ricky Bell gets about two. I beg your pardon, it's Dwight Ford. In for Ricky Bell. Dwight Ford. And again, timeout is called by quarterback Ben Seven. Third down and eight yards to go. 22 seconds remaining in the half. The Trojans in an eye formation. Evans has the ball. He's dropping back. Going long down the right sideline. And it is incomplete. Incomplete down at the four-yard line. It is intended for Kendall. It was simply sprinting down the right sideline. Evans just throwing as far as he could. Williams covering on the play and also Art Thomas. Walker waits for the snap at his own 40. He puts it up. Fair catch signal goes up and the fair catch is made at the 18-yard line. Face mask penalty here on that kick. A face mask penalty against the Trojans of Southern Cal. Uh, you'll be on hand to broadcast that game with Lon Simmons, a great friend of ours. That's next Saturday on many of these mutual stations. After Walker, he puts it up, and the little man dropping back there. It's Carl Rochi. Well, he took it, and he's hit the fumble, and the scramble is out at the 28-yard line. I think the Aggies got it. But time has run out regarding the Aggies recovered at their own 28, as time ran out of the team's head for the locker room. That's the end of the first half. With a score of the Trojans of Southern Cal, 20, the Texas Aggies, nothing. And to kick off America's first official bicentennial halftime at the 1975 Liberty Bowl. The Freedom Foundation at Valley Forge rises to the occasion with the combined USC and AM bands and the Spartan Airs drill team from Houston. As it presents the reigning Miss America, Tony Elaine Godin and Uncle Sam on an historical tour of our nation's great leaders as narrated to a national TV audience Educated. by ABC's Bill Fleming. Fleming. Hard to know where to start. We can't mention everyone. Well, here's Samuel Adams. 
Right you are. And he certainly was one of the leading spokesmen for the American cause. In fact, if you'll recall, it was Sam Adams who was responsible for those patriots dressed up as Indians who dumped the British tea into the Boston Harbor. That's the way they felt about not being permitted to have representatives in government. The first stars and stripes may have been made by this friend of Benjamin Franklin's in Philadelphia. Well, that's Betsy Ross, and what a beautiful flag. Red and white stripes and 13 white stars on a field of blue. Yes, and how we grew. Industry and agriculture prospered. Eli Whitney had found a new and better way to separate the cotton from its seeds. And a young man named Robert Fulton built a steam-powered boat that really worked. It was an age of progress for America. But disagreement on what powers belong to the states and what powers belong to the federal government and, of course, the issue of slavery set brother against brother. President Lincoln tried to get it all straightened out. By the people, for the people, shall not perish of the earth. One of the black men to make an important contribution to America after the war between the North and the South was Booker T. Washington. He founded Tuskegee Institute in 1881 and built it into an educational institution known the world over. We will sing one song for the old Kentucky. There were some great people in music, in literature, and the arts. Mentioning music, Uncle Sam, I know that that's the music of Stephen Foster. Yes, his songs have remained popular through the years. About a hundred years ago, they became a favorite of groups singing a brand new style of popular music. People called it Barbershop Harmony. Yeah. Do you remember the Lone Eagle, Lucky Lindy? Sure I do. That's Charles Lindbergh. You should have seen the welcome that those Frenchmen gave that courageous young flyer when he arrived at Le Bourget Field. He'd flown his single-engine plane for 33 hours from New York to Paris nonstop, all by himself. Listen to the music. Uncle Sam, I recognize that tune. It's Memphis Blues. Yes, the Memphis Blues was written by W.C. Hanson, who was born right here in Memphis. He was a jazz trumpeter and a composer. And of course, he wrote the St. Louis Blues, too. Whether you think of America's political structure, our private enterprise economic system, or our spiritual heritage, it's been the courageous individuals who knew what they believed in and who stood up for their beliefs. They have made the United States in these two centuries since 1776. But right now, it's time to do some celebrating. Let's give a cheer. Let's light the candles on the cake. Let's count our blessings. It was shouted first from Memphis at the Liberty Bowl, Happy Birthday, America. Amid a halftime roar of approval and a cascade of fireworks, the bicentennial celebration has been officially launched in Memphis, Tennessee. All right, Steve also. Here comes the kickoff as it's put up by Franklin. And it is taken back there at the seven yard line. Return to the 20, Randall. Now it's being swarmed under by the Texas Aggies. And so they're gonna start inside their own 20 yard line. As a matter of fact, it's just inches short of the 20, so now the Trojans of Southern Cal are leading by a score of 20 to nothing. They have the ball first and 10 just short of their own 20 yard line. And he's all right though, because Evans is quarterbacking the Trojans. They're in an eye formation. There's motion to the outside. That's Lee. And now a quarterback draw. A quarterback draw by Evans picks up three yards to the 23. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Blake Schwarz came in to make the tackle. He is a senior from Houston, Texas. Randy Simran is split part of the right side. Motion back to the left side now. That's Thurman. Evans is angling back. Make the handoff. He's going to keep the ball himself. He is at the 25 and stumbles off balance up to the 28-yard line. 
Picked up about five after he was thrown off balance by Garth Tenable and Tank Marshall. Garth Tenable, a senior from Euless, Texas, 6'2", 217, right outside linebacker. Tank Marshall, a junior from Dallas, Texas, 6'5", 258 pounds. That's Lee in motion. Here's Ricky Bell, trying to go over his own left guard. He did not get the first down. He did not get it. It's inches short, I think. They're getting him unstacked. The punting unit already is coming onto the field for Southern Cal. Reno is dropping back with him. There is the kick. Roaches lets it hit on the 32. There'll be no run back. It'll be down at the 32. First and 10 for the Texas Aggies at their own 32-yard on a 38-yard punt. Now it's taken by Whittier at the fullback and the wishbone, and he gets across the 35. Just... Uh, a foot or so across. And a pitch to Bubba Bean. And Bubba Bean looks to cut back. But can and he's thrown at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Far to the left side. Jim Hartman has a flanker left. They give it to Bubba Bean. He finds running room to the 45 to the 50. And on across into Southern Cal territory. It is at the 48 yard line. Prince, Stro Prince Strozier finally made the tackle. First and 10 for the Aggies. They held the ball out to Southern Cal 48. A 17-yard pickup for Bubba Bean. Bean has carried 13 times for 74 yards. A reverse this time, and it's taken by Jim Hartman. But Hartman is closed off. Hartman is closed off by a whole gang of Trojans. They're in an eye formation. Well, Bubba Bean got it. Little mix-up on the handoff as it was a little high to him, and he uh, leaned back and then started again and got it down to the 46-yard line. Third and eighth now, and it's Bubba Bean. No game. Closed off at the 46 by Rod Martin. That'll bring the punting unit out to the Yankees. Eric Williams also converging on the tackle. Danny Reese is deep. It's booted up. Reese calls for a fair catch, but he's going to let it go. Hits at the four. Bounds into the end zone. Touchback. 46-yard punt. The Yankees are trying to get downfield to kill it. They could not. It'll be put in play first and ten at the 20-yard line. Southern California leads here in the third quarter over the Texas Aggies by a score of 20 to nothing. And John McKay rounding out 15 fantastic years as a head coach at Southern Cal. As his team out in front, although they came into the Liberty Bowl as underdogs. They have the ball at the 20-yard line, and here once more with the action is Lindsey Nelson. All right, Al Wester, it's first and 10 at the 20. Evans now gives the ball off to Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell trying to go off tackle right. Got up to about the 22-yard line before he's closed off by Blake Schwarz. It's going to be second down and eight yards to go, and the ball's at the 22. Second down and eight yards to go for the Trojans. They have the ball at their own 22. Evans now waiting for motion by Thurman outside right. Evans angling back left. He wants to put the ball up. He guns it to the outside and a diving catch. Randy Simran. Randy Simran with a diving catch at the 31. Bill Thompson covering defensively, but there is no defense for a catch like that. Running back to the nine formation, the Southern Cal eye. Evans, the quarterback. And on a running draw, it's Ricky Bell. He's at the 45. Keeps his balance all the way up to the 44-yard line. Ricky Bell was whirling and stumbling. Finally stopped by Jackie Williams after Ed Simonetti had turned him around a time or two. First and 10 for the Trojans at their 44. And Lindsay quarterback Bill Thompson had a crack at him, too. What a defensive alignment they can stack up against you, this Texas A&M football team, with Schwarz and Dean and Field and Marshall in the front four, and with Simonetti and Robert Jackson and Garth Tenapel as the linebackers. Tenapel and Simonetti, both of them all Southwest Conference, both of them all Americans. First and ten for the Trojans at their own 44. Wide receiver right, a wing back right. That's Thurman in motion now to the outside right. Evans angling back and again gives it to Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell takes a wrinkle, goes outside to the 50. Now sprinting for the sideline. World drops the ball, recovers it out of bounds as Southern Cal retains possession at the 46. Lester Hayes made the tackle there. It's a family affair. Second and one at the 46-yard line. Then Evans up there once again running back to the nine. Wide receiver left, wing back right, coming motion down to the left, and that's Lee. And now Ricky Bell gets the ball. He's hit immediately, and he'll get no yardage here. Jimmy Dean and Edgar Fields hit him immediately, and Robert Jackson came in to close it off. And the ball is going to be spotted back at the 48 for a loss of two. Wide receiver to the left, a wing back right, running back to the line now. Of a delay of game penalty is coming up against the Trojans. The field judge with the whistle, that'll cost them five. That'll be a tough one because that'll make it third and eight now. Third down and eight yards to go now for the Trojans. The ball back at their own 47-yard line. Then seven. Starts motion by his left flanker back inside. He sprints out left. Stops, looks, throws on the run, and it's incomplete. Intended for Andy Summerin. 
Zimmerman was hit immediately by Bill Thompson, the junior cornerback from El Paso. It's going to be fourth and eighth. That'll bring the punting unit on for Southern Cal, and the Texas Aggies will be getting the football. We have six minutes, 39 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Southern Cal, 20 of the Texas Aggies, nothing. Punt formation now with Walker. He's putting it up now to Carl Rogers, and Rogers goes for a fair catch, lets it hit. And it is rolling on down toward the 10-yard line. They'll start first and 10 at the 10-yard line. Quarterback Mike Jay up there. Now they're in the wishbone. He fakes the ball to the fullback. He's running an option. He's going to keep it across the 10 to the 15 and hauled out from behind as he came around right in. Rod Martin brought him down. It's going to be spotted at the 17-yard line again of seven. By Mike Jay from Torrington, Wyoming. It's second down and three yards to go at the 17. Jim Hartman uh, running from the running, from the blocking back position. Uh, the senior from Luling, Louisiana, led the play there. He made the key block. He had to get the defensive end, David Lewis. He did. He kept him out of the play. They're in the wishbone again. Mike Floyd, far to the left side. They give it to the fullback, Woodard. He gets it to the 19-yard line for two. It's going to be third and one. We pause for station identification. They're in the wishbone still. Now back to the fullback in the pitch now. To Hartman, and Hartman turns the corner left. Gets ahead of the six for the first down and drives on to the 24. Rod Martin brought him down at first and ten at the 24-yard line for the Texas Aggies of Coach Emory Ballard. They won ten in a row this year. They were ranked number two in the nation at the time they were knocked off on December 6th by uh, Arkansas. They ended in a three-way tie for the Southwest Conference Championship along with the University of Texas, whom they had defeated, and the University of Arkansas, to whom they lost. I.J. up there again. Here's a quick pitch taken by Bubba Bean. Bubba Bean just, just across the 25 to the 26. Gary Jeter came in to make the tackle. All right, the wishbone again. The fullback Woodard, the freshman, goes to the 34-yard line. Very close to the first down stick. Kevin Bruce from La Cunada, California, came in to make the tackle at the 34. And now they're going to measure. They're going to bring out the chain to measure for the possible first down. We have four minutes, 19 seconds. See whether or not they picked up the first. They did. It's first and 10. The 10th first down of the game for AM. USC has nine. The option play run now. Turning the corner is Mike Jay. He goes out of bounds at the 39 yard line. Again, a five. It's going to be second down and five. Woodard, the freshman fullback, drives to the 45. Picked up another first down. First and 10 for the Texas Aggies. Now, dropping back is Jay. He puts it up long on the left sideline, incomplete. And covering defensively was Ron Bush. Ron Bush from San Bernardino was covering on the far side, intended for Mike Floyd. Give it to Woodard. He drove into the 49-yard line. Picked up about four, so it's going to be third and six. Dale Logie came in to make the tackle. He from Los Angeles, California. Now the option play and the quick pitch, and it's a loose ball, and it is recovered. It is recovered at the sideline by A&M. The deep punt formation man now is Mark Stanley. And he reached his deep. Thurman's ahead of him. Reese at the 21-yard line. Reese to the 25. Reese struggling to the 29-yard line. 36-yard punt. The Trojans will start first and 10 now. And they'll start at their own 29-yard line. Spencer Evans bringing up an eye formation for the wing left. Late in the third quarter here. Southern Cal leading 20 nothing. There's Lee in motion outside to the right. Give it up to Ricky Bell, off tackle right. He is spinning his way across the 35 and pushed back as he got to the 36 by Ed Simonetti, the All-American linebacker of Texas A&M. Gain of seven yards on the play. It'll be second and three. Second down and three yards to go for the Trojans of Southern Cal. Of course, we're just across the Mississippi River from the state of Arkansas. Arkansas, the University of Arkansas, is a member of the Southwest Conference. So there are many fans here in Memphis tonight pulling for the Texas A&M team, members of the Southwest Conference. But there's no doubt that Southern Cal is one of the glamour teams in the history of football. There are a great many fans here pulling for the University of Southern California. A long way from home. There goes Thurman in motion out to the right side. Now it's given out to the tailback, Ricky Bell. He's got the first down. across the 40 and on up to the 42-yard line. First and 10 for the Trojans. They have the ball at their own 42. Simonetti and Jackie Williams came in to make the tackle. One minute, 57 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Up in the front line of Southern California, some excellent boxing. Marvin, Marvin Powell, the big junior tackle from Fayetteville, North Carolina. They call him Boomer Powell. Just matched it with Edgar Fields, the big defensive tackle of Texas A&M, and he managed to move him out of the way. Powell against Fields, a good matchup. Bell has carried 19 times for 76 yards so far tonight. 
Running back to the nine formation here. Give it to Mosi Tatupu, the fullback. Penalty marker thrown into the stack. Tatupu got to the 44. Garth Tadepo was the tackler. It is a holding penalty against Southern Cal that will put the ball back at the 29-yard line. Holding against Southern Cal. Evans, handing off again to Ricky Bell, but on the draw, it was read out by Jimmy Dean, and he is dropping Bell. It'll be marked at the 24-yard line. Loss of five, it'll be second and 30. And April was right behind Dean. Dean made the first contact, and April was right there, coming from the right side linebacker spot and driving across the medium. We have less than 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Second down and 30 for the Trojans. They have the ball at their own 24-yard line. Here comes Thurman to the left side. He's double with Sumrin. Ben Evans brings him up in an eye formation. Osi Tatupu is the fullback. Ricky Bell the tailback. Bell got the handoff, but he was dropped. It'll be marked at the 21-yard line, a loss of three, and it'll be third and 33. The awesome Aggie defense going up here late in the third quarter. Jimmy Dean and Pat Thomas came to make the tackle, along with Fields. Edgar Fields from Austin, Texas as well. Six seconds left in the quarter. That will have been the last play of the quarter. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. As we start the fourth quarter now, Evans is calling starting signals. He's dropping straight back. That's the quarterback draw. And he is dropped back at the 18-yard line for a loss of a yard. A loss of three yards, as a matter of fact. Jimmy Dean coming over to make the tackle. There was a holding penalty against Southern Cal, but that was the third down play, and so the Aggies have declined it, making it fourth down and bringing the punting unit on now for Southern Cal. Glenn Walker is back in deep punt formation. Carl Roach is the deep man. Walker barely gets it off under heavy pressure. Roach is called for a fair catch and takes it at his 47-yard line. The Aggies of Texas A&M will start first and 10 at the 47. Quarterback is Mike Jay. Running back in an eye formation. He faces the tailback, rolls left, wants to throw on the run. Does throw, and it is taken by Hartman, Jim Hartman, inside the 40 of Southern Cal. It's going to be marked at the 37 of SC, first and 10 for the Aggies, as Mike Jay threw on the run for 16 yards to Jim Hartman. Hartman out of the backfield, turning across, and Ron Bush grabbed at the football and almost had it, almost stole it away. Well, dropping into our booth, Lindsay, is a young lady who is known across America as Miss America. We'll get a chance to talk to her in a second. She's been the busiest girl in town. It's first and ten at the 38-yard line. The option play run now by Mike Jay, and he's closed off on the far side at the 39-yard line. A loss on the play as Rod Martin came in. I'm rooting for the best team, and since I didn't have any favorites at the beginning of the game, Southern Cal staying in my hotel, and I've gotten to know the guys. It's the best reason I ever heard of. It's taken now by Mike Jay, and he has dropped back at the 45-yard line for a loss of six on the play. It's going to be third down at 17, Rod Martin. Came in to make the tackle. Angling out is Mike Jay. Looking to throw on the run. He puts it up to Hartman incomplete. Just got his fingertips on it. Did not hold on and so it is fourth down. And the punting unit comes on now for the Texas Aggies. Gets the punt away. And it is going to be dropped at the 22-yard line. They'll start first and then a 23-yard punt. What a beautiful young lady, Miss America, 1975. And the tallest young lady, I think. She's what, 5'9"? She's 5'9". I discovered that when we were standing side by side at the luncheon this afternoon. Ben Tedler is now waiting for the snap. He's got his pitch out to Ricky Bell, trying to sleep left. Closed off for a moment to break the tackle and stumbles his way up to the 24-yard line. Lester Hayes coming across to make the tackle again, and two is going to be second down. And eight yards to go for the Trojans. They have the ball at their own 24. Left set by Thurman, outside right. Now the handoff to Ricky Bell, and he drives straight forward up to the 30-yard line. In a six, it's going to be third down and two yards to go. At the 30-yard line, they're in a wing left with the wing back. It's coming motion outside right, that's Thurman. Ricky Bell uh, took the fake, but uh, Evans keeps it and spins his way up to the 33-yard line. I think he got the first down, but there's a penalty marker. Garth to Naples, came to make the tackle along with Jackie Williams. Five-yard penalty against the Trojans, puts the ball back to the 25-yard line, makes it third down and seven yards to go for Southern Cal. Now Lee in motion back toward the inside as Evans takes the ball. He's going to try to skirt left, 25 up to the 30, and he was hit as he got to the 34-yard line by Robert Jackson. He's got the first down. But there is a mass of bodies on the far side as they'll get him unstacked. 
Thank you, stop all they get that done, of course. Tempest flaring out there on the field as they try to get them uh, untangled, and Evans is on the ground. He was taken from behind, and Vince Evans is on the ground. He's injured. And uh, they finally get the squad separated, and Evans is getting attention. The quarterback of the Trojans of Southern Cal has been injured on the play, so with the score, Southern Cal 20 and the Aggies nothing. There's a timeout on the field. Now this for Lazy Boy and John Hancock. Now Southern Cal is ready to go. Mike Sanford's in their quarterback. First and 10 at the 33. He's a sophomore from Los Altos, California. Giving it off to Ricky Bell, and Bell gets across the 35, up to the 37, where he is pushed back. And a four yards on the play, it'll be second and six. Ed Simonini and Robert Jackson coming in to make the tackle. Running backs in an eye for Mike Sanford, the sophomore quarterback, who has replaced Evans. Gives it off to Moses to Tupo of his own left guard. Spun down and tried to get up again. He was at the 44. Jackie Williams upset him. The Tupu from Honolulu. That's Lee in motion back to the left side. Well, Ricky Bell got it, but he got a whole fistful of Edgar Fields about the same time. Second and 13. <laughs> Sweep left. I'll tell you one thing, Lindsay. Philadelphia is the only city in which I have ever broadcast where I found the hot chocolate frozen, and it did actually freeze. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the old stadium there, the old stadium that uh, the Army-Navy game was played in the Municipal, region. they called it in those days. That's right. Now this is to Ricky Bell again. Well, he's going nowhere. The Texas Aggie defense forms him back at the 43. Hank Marshall led it. Ben Walker is back in deep punt formation. Carl Roaches is deep to receive the punt. Walker gets the snap and he puts it up. High trajectory punt. Roaches going back to the nine yard line. Let's it hit it rolls into the end zone. Touchback, a 57 yard punt. Will be put in play first and 10 for the Aggies at the 20 yard line. We have a holding penalty on that last punt. A holding penalty, so the play is going to be brought back. Penalty is marked off against the Trojans and they will kick from deeper in their own territory. The line is going down to 28. Walker punched the ball high into the air, over toward the left sideline. Hits at the 44 and goes out of bounds at the 44-yard line. So the Aggies get it first and 10 at their 44 on a 28-yard punt. And up to Woodard now. He hits straight ahead and moves it three yards to the 47-yard line. Bruce coming in to make the tackle. It'll be second and seven for the Texas Aggies. They have the ball at their own 47. We're in the fourth quarter. They're coming out into a wishbow now. Dropping straight back. To throw the football. His quarterback, Mike Jane. He's pulled out by Gary Jeter. Big Gary Jeter had him with one hand and then the other. Jeter from Cleveland, Ohio. A 240-pound tackle from Southern Cal. A loss of 12 on the play. Moves the ball back to the 35-yard line. Dropping back to set up is Mike Jay. Throws along the right sideline. Down to the 45-yard line. Intended for the little man down there. Carl Roaches, but it's incomplete. Now the kick. Reese is chasing it over as it hits on the 35, bounce to the 30. There'll be no run back. And it's going to go to the 27-yard line. Long dead there. 38-yard punt. It'll be first and 10 for Southern Cal at their 27-yard line. And it'll be the end of an era as John McKay leaves the collegiate ranks and becomes the head coach of the Tampa Pro, Pro Team. For next season, first and 10 at the 27. Ricky Bell hits up the left side up to the 30-yard line. Lester Hayes made the tackle. Moshe Tatupu is still in there at fullback. Quarterback is Sanford, of course. Here's the pitch now, and it's a reverse play taken by Rod Connors on the left side of the 30, the 35, the 36. Quarterback is Evans, by the way. Evans is back in there. Evans came in on the last play, Lindsay. He came in and ran that last play. They're in a slot left. Evans is waiting for the snap now. He runs it himself. Quarterback sneaking. He got the first down up to the 39-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Edgar Field from Austin, Texas brought him down. First and 10 at the 39. To Tupu. The fullback directly behind Evans, the quarterback. Evans dropping back. Sprints back. Sets up. Moves long. And it could be intercepted. Incomplete. Bill Thompson making moves to try to get to the ball. Intended for Dennis Thurman. It'll be second and ten at the 39. Evans again. Going to a high count, waiting for the snap. He's got it. 
spinning out left. Lips one tackle, gets across the 45, and it's down at the 47 by Ed Simonini. Rod Connor is the tailback throwing a block for him there. Third down and two yards to go. Motion to the outside, contact with the line of scrimmage. Thurman, from a wing back set right, was going back to the inside and across. So there was contact all up and down the line, illegal procedure against Southern Cal. Illegal procedure against Southern Cal. Third down and seven yards to go. Thurman in motion, back to the outside left. Evans has got the ball. He looked as though he was trying to hand it off to Ricky Bell, but Ed Simonetti got in there. And now tempers are flaring and fists are being thrown at the Liberty Bowl. Both benches are emptying now. Emory Ballard is keeping his team from going out. Southern Cal raced out onto the field. Emory Ballard kept the Texas Aggies from going across. Then he's going to step across, and now tempers are really flaring. There must be a dozen fist fights on the field down there, and I saw Big Edgar Fields go down. The man who grabbed him in the shoulder pads, Melvin Jackson, the right guard of Southern California, they both went down. They are still wrestling, and in the middle is a half a dozen now throwing fists, and here's John McKay right in the middle of it, Lindsay. It must be said that Ballard has had better control of his squad than has John McKay. The bench emptied on the Southern Cal side, and on instinct, the Aggies started out of the entire coaching staff, was out on the field in front of them, held them back, and the Aggies never entered the play. The entire Southern Cal bench came out into the melee. Now the Southern Cal players are retreating to their side of the field. The Aggie bench never got into it at all, and that is control of the football team. Well, it looks like they're going to take a moment to get things settled down. So with the score, the Walker is back in deep punt formation now. The snap, he boots it up. Roach is moving over to the 20-yard line. The fair catch signal. He makes the catch at the 19, a 39-yard punt. They'll start first and 10. The Aggies will at their own 19-yard line. Lindsay, our Lazy Boy winners. The offensive player of this ball game, Ricky Bell. A 76-yard touchdown pass from Evans. A great run after a short pass. He rushed for 82 yards and 28 carries. And our defensive player of the game from Southern Cal, also the great tackle, Gary Jeta. Jay Carrying and he gets it out just to the 10-yard line. Gain of uh, maybe a foot or so. Mike Jay, the quarterback, turns, hands it off to his left halfback. Bubba Bean is driving up to the 14-yard line. It will, in fact, third down now. And here's running room for Texas A&M. Out across the 35, and it's Darrell Smith carrying. Across the 40, 45, out of bounds. Up about the 48-yard line. A quick opener there for Darrell Smith, the freshman from Fort Worth, Texas. Finally brought down by Mike Burns. 38-yard scamper, a big gainer for the freshman from Fort Worth. First and 10 off the Aggies. They have the ball at their own 48. One minute, 37 seconds left to play. Cock will start again when the ball is snapped. The Aggies would like to get something on the scoreboard. Southern Cal leading 20 to nothing. Carl Roach is far to the right side. Mike Jay, the quarterback. Has the wishbone now. Jay has the ball. Wants to go long. Running right now. Throws on the run. Taken by the little man Roaches. On the far side and he's out of bounds. At the 35-yard line of SC. They talk about Aggie X's. If you're an alumnus, you're an Aggie X. Now here's a pitch that he's fumbled but taken out of first half. Again, it was Daryl Smith. And he was still back there at the 36 yard line for a loss of a yard. We still have a lot of football to come, and I hope you have a very happy holiday. It's going to be second down now. 12 yards to go. The ball is at the 37. Jay rolls right through it on the run, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Darrell Smith. A sellout crowd, and a good football game. Here's a handoff again to Darrell Smith. It's it into the 35 yard line. Picked up two, and it's going to be fourth and ten now. 59 seconds left to play on this game. Southern Cal, 20 of the Texas Aggies, nothing. Fourth down play, and it's a pass play that is complete down inside the 20. Mike Jay angled out right. He likes to throw the ball on the run, and he completed it down to the 18-yard line to Darrell Smith. Dennis Thurman made the tackle. It's the first down. Jay dropping back to set up now. Wants to put the ball up and try to score. Can't find anybody. He's sacked. Back at the 27. Jay is sacked. Clock is running down to 15 seconds now. Here's the whistle. Second and 20 at the 27. Baker now runs the option, and he's dropped at the 30-yard line. Pulled down by Van Dyke, and time has run out, and the ball game is over. Pitch is empty now. The Trojans of Southern Cal have come on to defeat the Aggies by a score of 20 to nothing. John McKay has finished his career.
as a collegiate football coach. He'll become the head coach now of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Greg Fredding has completed his career as an assistant at Southern Cal. He becomes the head coach at Oregon State. And Southern Cal becomes the winningest bowl team in history with the win here at the Liberty Bowl. So the final score is Southern California 20, the Texas Aggies nothing. We'll present the wrap-up of tonight's game after this for Planners. It was Ricky Bell on the sensational play of the night, a 76 break, 76 yard breakaway play that uh, carried them for a 20 to nothing lead at halftime. And Southern California sat on those 20 points. They went right on through, shutting out defensively a very fine Texas A&M football team to win the game.